Oh yeah, welcome to Learn English with TV series. How many times did you get frustrated because you could understand English but felt that you couldn't speak it naturally and confidently? In today's lesson, you'll develop the confidence you need to feel natural and confident when speaking English. Plus, you'll have tons of fun doing it with the TV series Anne with an E. First, you'll watch a scene where Anne and Gilbert have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Then I'll help you with pronunciation tricks and exercises to take your speaking to the next level. And finally, you'll practice your speaking as if you were talking to the characters. Let's get started. You sure pulled that off. We did. What in the world did you say to our class to make them change their minds about me? I reminded them that you always find a way to make things right. <laughs> a historical precedent would suggest otherwise. <laughs> Speaking of which, shouldn't we be arguing about something right now? Probably. Mm. <laughs> you want to start? I can't think of anything. Me neither. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years, who knew we'd make such a good T-E-A-M? We'll start with an exercise called imitation. Now, imitation is about mimicking how someone says something with the intention of improving certain aspects of your own speech. It helps you focus on the melody, intonation and sounds of English instead of just focusing on individual words. This is how it works. Close your eyes, listen carefully and remember to pause after each line they say in the scene. Imitate exactly what you hear. Don't read what's on the screen. First, focus on the stress and intonation of the sentence without worrying about individual words. Then, choose a specific sound or word from each sentence that you find challenging to pronounce and try to focus on getting it similar to how the character said it. And finally, repeat all the steps above two times. You sure pulled that off? You sure pulled that off. Now let's do this for the entire scene together. You sure pulled that off? Let's start with the word sure. Here the letter S is pronounced as shh. Similar to how you would tell a child to be quiet. So this is an unvoiced sound, which means no vibration in the throat. You're not going to use your voice. So your tongue will be down and your teeth are definitely not going to touch each other. Shh, shh. So there's a little space between your teeth when you say that. Your mouth is going to be slightly rounded and you're simply going to release the air. Shh. Repeat these words. Pressure. Sugar. Ensure. You sure pulled that off? Now let's look at how that off is pronounced. Did you notice that the word that is stressed more heavily than the other words in the sentence? Stressing an individual word emphasizes the importance of the meaning of that word in the sentence. So we can say the same thing with different word stress and change the meaning of it. I love you. I love you. I love you. The first means I love you. Maybe nobody else does, but I do. Let's repeat that. I love you. The second means that what I feel for you is love. You might doubt it, but I really do love you. Let's try that again. I love you. The third means that I love you and you alone. I don't love any other person. No, not anyone. It's you and you alone. Let's try that again. I love you. So when Gilbert says that in this context, he's referring specifically to a previous scene where Anne organized a protest to speak out against injustice. You sure pulled that off? 
Now let's pay attention to how T is pronounced at the end of that. Gilbert pronounces this with a flap T sound, so it sounds like that off, that off. To make the sound, the tip of your tongue touches the top of your mouth in a very quick movement. That off, that off, that, that, that off, that off. The flat T is voiced, meaning that if you touch your throat, you should be able to feel your vocal cords vibrate. That off, that off. You might be asking yourself, how will I know when to use a flap T sound? Now, the rule in American English is that they occur between vowels and the second vowel is an unstressed syllable. In this case, the T is between vowel A and O. That off. Repeat these words. Butter. That is. At all. What in the world did you say to our class to make them change their minds about me? Now, the word world can be confusing for many learners. In fact, many of my students find it difficult to differentiate between world and word. First, we have the W sound. To do this, round your lips, pull the tongue back as in wa, wa. Then the O sound takes on a schwa, uh, uh. If you're using American pronunciation, the R is rotic meaning the tongue is curved back and you roll the R in a sense, so it sounds like whirl, whirl. The L in world is clearly pronounced. Your tongue should be raised in the back and the front and the tip of your tongue should touch the back of your teeth. World, whirl, whirl. Then finally, we have a plosive D sound at the end. In other words, you should feel the air being released from your mouth when making the sound. World, world. Make sure your tongue touches the gum behind your teeth, not your teeth. Note that the sound must be voiced. So if it sounds like a T, t it's wrong. World. You should feel your vocal cords vibrate. A historical precedent would suggest otherwise. Now let's look at the word precedent. Notice that the C here is pronounced similar to the letter S. With a relaxed jaw, slowly release the air through your teeth. Press. You could also think of the word press, precedent. So the rule here is that when the letter C is followed by the vowels E, I or Y, it usually sounds like a soft S. Repeat these words. Scent. Cyclone. Circus. A historical precedent would suggest otherwise. In American English, this word is pronounced as suggest. You can hear a bit of a G sound at the end of the first syllable. Sug. Sug. So put stress on the first syllable. Suggest. Suggest. In British English, however, this is normally said as suggest. Suggest. Put stress on the second syllable. Suggest. Suggest. Notice that there is no proper G sound here, just a J sound. J. Suggest. Speaking of which, shouldn't we be arguing about something right now? Pay attention to the word arguing. The GU is pronounced as U. So we say arguing. Let's repeat that. Arguing. As you can see, pronunciation is an essential part of becoming a fluent speaker. Fluent speakers are easily understood because they've mastered the rhythm, intonation, linking and stressed, so they sound natural when they speak. Remember, the more you practice, the better you'll become at it. So many of you have told us that you are frustrated with learning English because you have no one to practice speaking with. Well, we went ahead and solved that. With our Real Life English app, you can connect with other English learners from around the world at a simple press of a button. What's more, you can also use it to advance your English by listening to our weekly podcast and practicing new words with exclusive flashcards. It gets better. It's absolutely free. And you can download it right now by clicking 
up here or down in the description below. Probably. Mm. You want to start? Gilbert uses connected speech to reduce one to to wanna. Let's practice that. Wanna. Wanna. You might not have been taught this in school, but practicing reductions will help you speak English more naturally and understand spoken English more easily. Check out some examples Andrea shared in this lesson. Contractions like reductions are a shortened form of a combination of words. However, with contractions, we usually use an apostrophe to represent the missing letters, as in they are becomes there, we have becomes we. Where reductions are considered informal, meaning they're not really appropriate for business or academic discussions, contractions are acceptable in both formal and casual conversations. I can't think of anything. Me neither. Huh. Here we have an interesting word that can be pronounced in different ways. In American English, we say neither, neither. However, in British English, it's common to say neither, neither. How are you doing so far? Let us know down in the comments which movie or TV series you would like to practice with. Before you actually start speaking with the characters, you can click here to listen to the entire clip again. Now it's speaking time. First, you'll be Anne and interact with Gilbert by listening to what she says without subtitles. Then you'll respond to him by following Anne's lines on screen like this. What, what in the world, world did you say to our class, class to make them change, change their minds, minds about me? Now it's your turn. You sure pulled that off. We did. What in the world did you say to our class to make them change their minds about me? I reminded them that you always find a way to make things right. <laughs> a historical precedent would suggest otherwise. <laughs> Speaking of which, shouldn't we be arguing about something right now? Probably. Mm. <laughs> you want to start? I can't think of anything. Me neither. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years, who knew we'd make such a good T E A M? Now, let's invert. You'll be Gilbert. You sure pulled that off? We did. <laughs> what in the world did you say to our class to make them change their minds about me? I reminded them that you always find a way to make things right. <laughs> a historical precedent would suggest otherwise. <laughs> Speaking of which, shouldn't we be arguing about something right now? Probably. You want to start? I can't think of anything. Me neither. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years, who knew we'd make such a good T E A M? Now that you're all warmed up, let's put your speaking to the test with a scene where Marilla and Anne are talking about female roles on the farm. A girl would be of no use to us, do you understand? I can't say that I do. I beg your pardon? I don't mean any disrespect, but couldn't I do the farm chores even though I'm a girl? That's not the way of things and you know it. But couldn't I? I'm as strong as a boy and I prefer to be outdoors instead of cooped up in a kitchen. I don't understand the conundrum. For example, what if suddenly there were no boys in the world? None at all. Fiddlesticks. It doesn't make sense that girls aren't allowed to do farm work when girls can do anything a boy can do, and more. Do you consider yourself to be delicate and incapable? Because I certainly don't. Anyway, since I'm here now, couldn't you consider it? I could not. I'd put those fool notions out of your head. <sighs> Come along. Let's get you washed up for supper. This time, we won't do the imitation together, but I'd like you to put into practice what you've learned before you speak with the characters. 
as a bonus tip, I highly recommend you record and listen to yourself after doing it. Ready to speak? As you already know, first you'll be Marilla and in the second round, you'll be Anne. Ready? Let's go. A girl would be of no use to us, do you understand? I can't say that I do. I beg your pardon? I don't mean any disrespect, but couldn't I do the farm chores even though I'm a girl? That's not the way of things and you know it. But couldn't I? I'm as strong as a boy and I prefer to be outdoors instead of cooped up in a kitchen. I don't understand the conundrum. For example, what if suddenly there were no boys in the world? None at all. Fiddlesticks. It doesn't make sense that girls aren't allowed to do farm work when girls can do anything a boy can do and more. Do you consider yourself to be delicate and incapable? Because I certainly don't. Anyway, since I'm here now, couldn't you consider it? I could not. I'd put those fool notions out of your head. Well, come along. Let's get you washed up for supper. A girl would be of no use to us, do you understand? I can't say that I do. I beg your pardon? I don't mean any disrespect, but couldn't I do the farm chores even though I'm a girl? That's not the way of things and you know it. But couldn't I? I'm as strong as a boy and I prefer to be outdoors instead of cooped up in a kitchen. I don't understand the conundrum. For example, what if suddenly there were no boys in the world? None at all. Fiddlesticks. It doesn't make sense that girls aren't allowed to do farm work when girls can do anything a boy can do and more. Do you consider yourself to be delicate and incapable? Because I certainly don't. Anyway, since I'm here now, couldn't you consider it? I could not. I'd put those fool notions out of your head. <sighs> Come along. Let's get you washed up for supper. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. If you'd like to continue practicing your pronunciation skills, then check out this lesson next. Yes, the first part is exactly like the word wing. The M sound at the end can be tricky as well. For that one, you want to press your lips together while your vocal cords vibrate. Mmm. Mmm. Notice that this is a nasal sound, so there will be air and vibration going through your nose as well. Repeat these words. Mom. Time. Man.